Throughout the ensuing night, a score of preoccupations gripped them all. No one could sleep. Charius was angry. Polycharmus tried to console him. Mithridates, for his part, was basking in the hope of getting a bye, so to speak, as in athletic games, while Charius and Dionysius competed for Calerho, then himself carrying off the prize without a struggle. The next day, when the discussion began, Charius at once asked to be allowed to go to Miletus and asked Dionysus to give him his wife back. Calerho himself, herself, he said, would not stay there once she had seen him. As far as I am concerned, said Mithridates, you can go. I don't want you to be separated from your wife even for one day. I wish that you had never left Sicily and that no trouble had ever befallen the two of you. But fortune is capricious, and she has involved you in a grim drama. So you must be very careful about what you decide about the next step. At the moment, you are rushing ahead emotionally, not rationally. You are not looking ahead. Do you propose to go alone and a foreigner to a very big city and try to tear away his wife from a wealthy man who in the most prominent citizen of Asia when she is specially linked to him? What power have you on your side? Hermocrates and Mithridates will be a long way away, and they are your only allies. They can grieve for you, but they cannot help you. Besides, I am afraid Miletus is an unlucky spot for you. You have already suffered badly there, but what you have suffered will seem like privileged treatment to you. Miletus was kinder to you in the past than it will be in the future. You were put in chains, true, but your life was spared. You were sold as a slave, but to me. But this time, if Dionysius catches you trying to wreck his marriage, what god will be able to save you? You will find yourself in your rival's power, and his power is absolute. Perhaps he won't even believe you are Charius, and if he does, that will be even more dangerous for you. Do you not know what love is like? You must be unique. Love revels in tricking people, setting traps. I think you had better try the woman out but first by letter. Find out whether she remembers you, whether she is prepared to leave Dionysius or wants to make thrive the house of the man who wed her. Write her a letter, make her grieve, make her rejoice, make her search for you and call you to her. I'll find a way to get the letter to her. Go off and write to her. Charius took this advice. When he was alone, with no one near, he tried to write. But his tears flowed, and his hand trembled, and he could not. He wept dearly over his sad lot. Then he managed to start this letter. From Charius to Calerho. I am alive, and thanks to Mithridates, my benefactor, and yours, I hope. I was taken to Caria and sold by barbarians who set on fire that splendid Trureni that was your father's flagship. The state had sent off a delegation in it to recover you. I do not know what has happened to the other Syracusans, but my friend Polycharmus and I were on the point of being executed when our master took pity on us and we were spared. But. All of Mithridates' kindness is counteracted by the distress he has caused me in telling me of your marriage. Death I expected, I am human, but I never thought to find you married. Change your mind, I beseech you. This letter of mine is drenched with the libation of my tears and kisses. I am your Charius, that Charius you saw when you went to Aphrodite's temple as a virgin that Charius who caused you sleepless nights. Remember our bridal chamber and that night of initiation when you first knew a man and I a woman. You will say I show jealousy. That is the mark of a man who loves you. I have made amends to you. I was sold, enslaved, put in chains. Do not harbor malice against me for kicking you in my temper. 
In my turn, I ascend the cross because you of you and did not say a word against you. Oh, if you should still remember me, my sufferings are nothing. But if you are minded otherwise, you will be passing sentence of death on me. Mithridates gave this letter to Hyginus, a very trusted man who administered all his possessions in Caria. He had revealed his own passion to him as well. He also wrote to Calerho himself, expressing his goodwill and concern for her, and saying that it was for her sake that he had reprieved Charius. He advised her not to treat her first husband cruelly, and promised that he would personally see to it that they recovered each other if he had her agreement to. He sent three attendants with Hyginius and expensive gifts and a large amount of gold to avoid suspicion. The other servants were told that they were destined for Dionysius. He instructed Hyginus to leave the others at Hereni when he got there and go on to Miletus by himself in the guise of an Ionian. He spoke Greek and reconnaître. When he had found out how to handle the situation, he was to bring the Rini party to Miletus. So Hyginus went off and set about carrying out his instructions. But fortune ordained an issue different from what was intended. She set on foot matters of greater moment. When Hyginus left for Miletus, the slaves were left without any supervision. With an abundant money at their disposal, they launched on a bout of dissolute living. In a small town, where in true Greek fashion, everyone was inquisitive. This extravagance on the part of visitors attracted general attention. A group of unknown fellows living luxuriously, they struck people as probably robbers and at least runaway slaves. So the chief magistrate came to their inn and made a careful search. He found gold and precious jewelry. Thinking they were stolen, he interrogated the servants, asking them who they were and where these things came from. Fear of torture induced them to disclose the truth that Mithridates, the governor of Caria, had sent them as gifts to Dionysius, and they showed him the letters as well. As they were fastened with seals, the magistrate did not open them. He handed everything over to the public officials, along with the servants, and he sent them to Dionysius, thinking to earn his gratitude thereby. At that moment, Dionysius was entertaining the leading citizens at a sumptuous party. A flute was just beginning to play, and voices were raised in song. At that point, the letter was handed to him. From Bias, chief magistrate of Rini, to his benefactor Dionysius, greetings, gifts and letters being sent to you by Mithridates, the governor of Caria, were being damaged by worthless slaves, whom I have seized and sent on to you. Dionysius read this letter in the middle of the party and preened himself on the royal gifts. He ordered the seals to be broken and set about reading the letters. So he saw the words, From Charius to Calerho, I am alive. His legs and heart gave way. Then darkness spread over his eyes. But even as he fainted, he kept hold of the letters. He was afraid someone else might read them. People bustled about him. He came to his senses, realized what had happened to him, and told his servants to carry him to another room. He wanted peace and quiet, he said. The party broke up in dismay. People imagined Dionysius had a, had a stroke. Left to himself, Dionysius read the letters over and over again. He was gripped by emotions of all sorts, anger, despair, fear, disbelief. As for Charius being alive, that he did not believe. It was the last thing he wanted. It was rather an excuse for procuring adultery, he suspected, on the part of Mithridates, who was trying to seduce Calerho by encouraging her to think she could recover Charius.